Good morning, Connections. Glad you're here. We're talking about rebellion this week. And it's easy for us to identify rebellion in others. When we read the story of Saul, we're like, how could Saul have been so foolish to leave God's direction and chart a course away from him? Yet, prayerfully, the reason we're talking about rebellion this week is that God protect our heart from rebelling in very similar ways. Yesterday, we looked at words from Jesus himself, who laid out very clearly we're either working for him or working against him. And by the, the passage that's placed around that statement, Jesus wasn't talking about people of the world who don't know God. He was talking about people who had an opportunity to come into right relationship with God, but now are choosing to go against God. And that's because Jesus follows up the statement of you're either with me or you're against me with a, a passage about blasphemy. And the blasphemy that Jesus is most concerned about is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. And those who know who the Holy Spirit is and have experienced the Holy Spirit, those are people within the family, not outside the family. So I want to bring more clarity by looking in Hebrews for a further explanation of the damage that is done for those who have been given an opportunity and have accepted the gift of salvation then turning against God, rebelling against God. So we find ourselves in Hebrews 6, verse 4. For it is impossible to bring back to repentance those who were once enlightened, those who have experienced the good things of heaven and shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the power of the age to come and who have then turned away from God. That brings clarity to the statement that we witnessed Jesus make yesterday. The reason why blasphemy against the Holy Spirit is a no-no is because you have had been brought into the family and you have received all of the privilege and all of the the knowledge and the wisdom, and yet at some point, similar to Saul, those who rebel against God at that point say, I know all about God, and I choose to follow my own way versus God's way. Now, we would like to say that that is okay. Many of us have done just that started a relationship with God, and broke up with God. Started a relationship with God, broke up with God. It's only by God's grace that we are even having this conversation, relying on God's grace is a totally different expectation and one that you should not have. Witnessing what happened earlier in the story of Saul that God had planned for the lineage of Jesus to go through the kingship of Saul, but when Saul chose to go his own way, God brought King David. What opportunities might we miss out on if we too choose to go our own way versus following Christ? Why would we be any different? And that's what the author of Hebrews is trying to help us understand, is that to have all of this, this wonderful experience with God and then reject it is worse than never knowing God in the first place. Those like the, the criminal that was next to Jesus 
on the cross who repented that day are more fortunate than those who have been part of the church and then rejected him. Continuing, it is impossible to bring such people back to repentance. By rejecting the Son of God, they themselves are nailing him to the cross once again and holding him up to public shame. When the ground soaks up the falling rain and bears a good crop for the farmer, it has God's blessing. But if a field bears thorns and thistles, it is useless. The farmer will soon condemn that field and burn it. We spoke of this yesterday, that we often have God, the God of judgment, the God of wrath in the Old Testament, and then we believe that the God of the New Testament is the, the one that speaks of love and, and repentance and forgiveness and grace. Do not mistake the same God, the God of the Old Testament, that is speaking judgment to Saul, is the same God of the New Testament, and we should not take him for granted. We should do everything. We should, today, we should say, search us, O Lord. If you find any seeds of rebellion within our hearts, eradicate it. We do not want to fall prey to the pride that we witness come across or come upon so many others. We desire to live out a life that glorifies you and to follow your word closely. Then we will truly be sons and daughters of the God Most High. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for opening our eyes, and we ask for forgiveness for the times that we have, have broken up with you squandered all that you have blessed us with and pursued our fortune in the world. It is only by grace, Lord, that we are here having this conversation with you today. Remind us regularly, Lord, not to put you to the test and not to test your grace and your willingness to forgive over and over and over again. Let us take your word seriously that once we reject you, the way back is, is difficult at best and not guaranteed. We witness strong judgment come against those who were chosen by you. We thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. Help us to live lives from this day forward that bring honor and glory to you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we'll wrap it up with an encouraging word. Now that we're all very, very scared of have we ever rebelled, an encouraging word for you tomorrow and hopefully launch into uh, yet another uh, the final story I want to draw from 1 Samuel on Sunday. Until then, know that I love you and I miss you, and please be good.